What is going on YouTube? It is Baku back with another build video. In today's video, we are looking at Storm Trance plus Storm Chancers in or Storm Jancers Embrace. Mixed with Prismatic, I found that this build can be really effective in GMs as long as you don't like doing DPS. This build is centered around shutting things down and abusing your melee and zapping everything into non-existence. Where this build does shine, there are a lot of underlying factors that cause it to not be as good as other builds, and that's mainly because this is a support build meant for clearing ads and slowing ads down to give your teammates some breathing room. I also noticed in the run that I did, having another person playing support isn't really that optimal. So if you run this build, make sure your teammates are not running support as well, because it ended up causing more problems than good. First, we're going to do the recommended stats for this build. I recommend at least 100 dis resilience, 100 discipline, 50 to 70 recovery, and put the rest in strength if you have stats left over. Now, we're going to go into the pros. 100% super uptime as long as you pop your super with adds around. 100% transcendence uptime uh, for getting kills with your kinetic weapon, which will lead into all the aspects and fragments. I'll get to that later. Uh, your ability spam is top tier as long as it, as everything feeds into your class ability, while also utilizing other mods to feed into your other abilities. Overloads as a whole are useless against this build, literally. Once you start chain, chaining your lightning slide on top of having Bleak Watcher, overloads really don't stand a chance. Divinity is essential to this build as it stuns and overloads and you can buff your teammates. This build, as I said before, is really, really good in add dense areas. Note, if you have a teammate who decides to run invis of any kind, uh, making you invis, when popping Storm Trance, you do not lose invisibility on kills, making your DR that much better. Popping Transcendence as well is key before popping your super. As long as you are surrounded, by, surrounded, you get that extra DR, which is always helpful. Uh, which that leads into the cons. Using your super against a champion is useless, as it does not feed into the overall play, overall play loop of the build. Storm Dancers Embrace is meant to be a catalyst of getting 45 to 50 percent of your super back. This is important because you want to make sure that you use your super in add dense areas. Survivability outside of super and transcendence combo is pretty bad. Let me explain. While out of your super, if you don't have the right mods on your chest piece, it will be detrimental to the build as you will die and not being alive means you can't control the field, meaning your teammates will suffer as a result. So the aggression apart from your slide is basically out of the question. Being aware of your surroundings will mitigate these issues I've found. So going into the weapons, I used Smite of Myron Harrowed, or Moraine, I can't pronounce that, my bad. Uh, I utilized Demolitionist, I really love this role. Um, Firefly or Adrenaline Junkie is good, it doesn't really matter. But Demolition is the main key factor here because final blows with this weapon will not only generate me both transcendent light and dark energy, it will also give an improved amount of grenade energy as well. Divinity, as I said, is great for overload champions or champions in general and buffing your teammates. As far as heavy weapon goes, I did use Apex Predator, however you don't need to use Apex Predator. Um, you can use any heavy that you want, uh, as long as it fits the surge, I think that's perfectly fine. So with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to be using in our subclass. Obviously we're going to be using Storm Trance as a super. I found that Phoenix Dive is really good here um, because of the cooldown you'll always have it up. Glide doesn't matter, use whatever you're comfortable with. I utilize Arcane Needle for those extra slides and Cold Snap Grenade in case I get into a panic situation I can throw the Cold Snap and it'll still stun an overload champion or freeze the enemy running towards me. It's really good especially when the Seeker freezes other targets. For aspects we're going to use lightning surge along with bleak watcher. Lightning surge if you slide towards an overload you can stun them because it will jolt it. And that's the aspects abilities and super. So let's look into the fragments. So first we're going to go facet of sacrifice. While I have an arc solar or void buff ability which you will always have. Uh, grants you bonus darkness transcendence energy. Facet of protection, while surrounded by combatants, you are more resistant to incoming damage. While transcendent, the effect is increased. 
this is really important guys so like i said you're going to pop transcendence and then you're going to pop storm trance and jump into those enemies because you literally can't die especially if you have a, a teammate who can make you invis at the same time you're unkillable at that point uh facet of dawn to give us radiant which will also feed in to facet of sacrifice facet of hope while you have an elemental buff which you again will always have your class ability will generate more qu quickly. Facet of Grace, defeating targets with kinetic weapons, which this will also buff your kinetic weapon that you're using. Uh, which you, you don't have to use Smite. Um, anything with Demolitionist that's kinetic will also be very beneficial, I, I'd say, to it. Um, and then Facet of Purpose. This really brings it together because, so when you pick up an Orb of Power, you're going to become Amplified. Amplified feeds in to Facet of Sacrifice, but it also feeds in to Facet of Hope. So you have two different ways to get buffs to feed in to Facet of, or um, not Facet of Purpose, to feed in to Facet of Sacrifice and the Facet of Hope. So that'll pretty much lead us into what I use on the artifact. Um, you're basically abusing, I know that I'm not using a sniper here, but I leave those there because it really doesn't affect the build as much. Um, same with solar full illumination. So looking into it, you're going to go transference, gain increased grenade and melee damage while transcendent. This is huge. Galvanic armor. While you have an arc or prismatic subclass, incoming damage from con con combatant damage is reduced while amplified. This feeds into picking up those orbs of power, becoming amplified, you get more DR, more survivability. It's really great. Radiant orbs also feeds into the facet of hope and facet of purpose. And then elemental siphon, rapid final blows with a kinetic weapon or a weapon matching your super will create an elemental uh, pickup, which in this case would be ionic traces. So with that being said, we're going to go into what I use to make this whole thing come together. So, first things first, on this chest piece you'll no notice that I have melee damage resistance. This is what I use while making the video. Guys, please, do not use this. Enemies, if they're close enough to you, you're going to zap them anyway. Please, go con concussive dampener. I found that the, the snipers are more lethal than anything that's going to kill you up close. Um, I just wanted to put that in there. We use Special Ammo Finder with Special Ammo Scout. This will help you get Divinity Ammo. Kinetic Siphon for those orbs, because you're, you're going to be mainly using your Kinetic Weapon. Impact Induction, causing damage with melee attacks. Reduce your grenade cooldown. Uh, grants Class Ability Energy when you use a Powered Melee. And then Class Ability Energy when you cause damage with grenades. So this will help you get your Class Ability back way faster. So with Recuperation, we, we're going to double down on that. We're going to use Absolution to feed into all abilities, but you really want double Recuperation for that survivability factor. So with using Phoenix Dive, I found that Powerful Attraction is the best uh, optimal option because if you dive out of the way and there's orbs nearby, they will absorb into you, feeding in and looping into the gameplay that you have going. Outreach. Uh, we did this for the extra bump in melee cooldown because it's needed. And then Reaper. Shortly after using your class ability, the next weapon final blow will create an orb of power. This feeds into the overall point of the build, but also you're going to be spamming your Phoenix Dive so much that the uptime, it really doesn't matter. That is the build, guys. I hope you enjoy the video. If you have build recommendations, please let me know. I will. I'm so down to to build anything. I I don't care. I I just love making builds. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm sorry for this long introduction. I'm trying something different. Uh, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I didn't see those strip mines.
Is this feller even coming? This is not a good look. No. To be fair though, I didn't get in that turret mine, so I don't know why I exploded, because it was between the rocks and not up here. But... Maybe this is why people don't play with us, we die too much. I mean, we can't die more than 10 people, right? We're not that bad. I don't know, we die a lot. Yeah. What's the use of having 20 revives at the end of it if you didn't use any of them? Uh, getting through it faster, not having to worry about reviving people. Yeah, there's some fun in that. Then I can't make fun of you for dying. Yeah, but I hate getting made fun of. I've, I've voiced that so many times, but nobody listens to me. My fucking eye is burning. webbing on the floor looks like some kind of art conductor.
Oh, he's in the cheese spot. Oh, that's not good. I was kind of relying on him being down here. 
so I can give the boss. What was that? That overload's gonna go before I die. Oh shit. See, you're still invisible. Or were. So. Still, how did they learn about the 